Hallelujah. It's so good to be in the house of God today. So good to be with my friends and my family. I love y'all this morning. I said I love y'all this morning. Amen. So today, if you have your Bibles, I want to turn to 2 Chronicles chapter 7. 2 Chronicles chapter 7. And uh, we'll start at verse 1. And while you're turning on, we'll pray. Lord, I thank you for the day that you have prepared for us. Lord, I thank you for the great victories that we've won here in America this week. Lord God, we give you all the honor and all the glory. We give you all the power. We thank you for it today, Lord. We thank you that you're still on the throne, that you're still ruling, and that you're still rolling today. And I just want to honor you for that today, Lord God. You've been so good to us. You're good to our families. You're good to our church. You're good to us as individuals, Lord. You saved us from our sin. Hallelujah. You shed your blood on the cross of Calvary that we may be saved. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord God, I ask that you would pour out your anointing on me this morning and that you would help me to deliver your word. I pray, Lord God, that your word would cut all the way asunder into the marrow of the bone and replenish the blood this morning. Lord, I ask that you would change us for time and eternity this morning. Lord God, I ask that you would render the heaven and come down and commune with us and walk among us in Bethel Bible Church today. Lord God, I ask that you would send the fire down today. Lord God, I don't want to pray for revival. I want to be a revival this morning. Lord God, I want to be a revival today. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I ask, Lord, that you would pour that spirit out on us, Lord, that your sons and your daughters may prophesy. Hallelujah, that your young men shall see visions and your old men dream dreams. I ask, Lord God, that you would pour that spirit out on us here in these last days and that we can see great and mighty miracles happen in your house. And everywhere that we go because we believe in your name. Lord God, I ask that you would touch the people that are here today, Father. Touch the ones that ain't. I ask that you would give us a desire to pray, a desire to seek your word, and a desire and a hunger to be in your house and to hear the word of God. Lord God, I pray for all the individuals. I pray for their souls. I pray for their mind. I pray for their heart. That, Lord God, you would draw us close unto you. Lord, show us what to do and how to do it in these days to come. And we thank you for it. Now, I ask, Lord God, that, the, that, your, that your presence would just fill the temple, that your train would fill the temple right now in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And we speak it out and we prepare the way of the Lord right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Chapter 7, verse 1, say amen if you amen. got it. Amen. Now come on, say amen. 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 All right. Amen. Now when Solomon had made an end to praying, now when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. And the priest could not enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. And when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshiped and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Yeah. Now this portion of scripture that we're reading about right here, they had built the temple. Amen. Come on, y'all. They had built the temple, and Solomon had made it all beautiful, and he was praying a blessing over this place. He was, he was prophesying over it. He was declaring and decreeing what it was going to be, and he was telling the people how the things were going to operate in the temple of God, and this was the most holy place that there was. Come on. The Holy of Holies, where the mercy seat of Christ, where the mercy seat of God, where that Ark of the Covenant was sitting, was the most holy place in the whole world. Come on, church. Come on. Hallelujah. And it says that when he got finished praying, that the fire come down. Now, this morning as we come to church, I want us to be a praying people. That way, when we pray, we see things happen. When we pray, just like Elijah on the mountain, come on, Daddy just preached that sermon about Elijah on the mountain, and when he prayed that the fire come down, and God showed him who was God. Amen? Well, the world needs to see today that us Christians, that when we pray, stuff happens. 
happens. When we pray and when we seek after God and we start giving our all into our prayer, come on church, when we start speaking it out, when we start declaring things, when we start decreeing things, that the fire of the Lord will fall and things start happening all around us. Now you say, what's going to happen? Well, the word of God says the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering. Amen? Now, I've been preaching to y'all and saying that you need to be on fire. You need the Holy Ghost in the fire. Amen? How many times have I said that? Bunch and bunch and bunch. I sound like a broke record. Amen? You need the fire of the God. You need the fire of the throne. You need the fire in your life. Hallelujah. Well, where does the fire come from? It comes straight from God. It comes from God. God lights the fire. Come on, church. In the days of the Levites, when they set up the temple, the tabernacle in the wilderness. Amen? And you can ask me quite a, if you don't believe me. Come on, church. That when they set that first sacrifice on that burnt offering, who put the fire there? The priest didn't light the fire. God lit the fire. And then God said, don't you let my fire go out. Uh, and scholars say for over 800 years, uh, that fire never went out. Amen. Glory be to God. So this morning as we come to the church... Uh, and we come into the house of God, and we come into the temple, and I'm a praying man. Hallelujah. I shall see the fire fall like never before, and things are going to happen, and the glory is going to fall. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why I wore my red tie today. Amen. It wasn't for the 4th of July, Billy John. It was because I want to see the fire in the church. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I heard a preacher preaching at the Brownsville Revival. I've been watching it on YouTube, on my TV. And he preached a sermon around 4th of July, and this is what he titled it, Fireworks. Not fireworks. Not that kind of fire. I'm talking about the fire of God. I'm talking about the fire that dwells inside of me. I'm talking about the fire that the Lord lit. I said that the Lord lit. Right. Hallelujah. And I can't let burn out. Amen. The kids run around. They say, well, let's get lit. They talk about partying. Come on. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Let's get lit. I'm so lit this morning. Come on, church. The world ain't got no idea the way I'm living. Hallelujah. I'm so lit that I wake up in the morning shouting and praising God. I'm so lit that when I lay down my head at night, I'm dreaming about praising God. This morning I woke up at 6.15, dreaming that I was preaching. And it woke me up out of my sleep and I just started thanking God for it. I'm dreaming about preaching the word of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. It's because there's a fire shut up in my bones. Thank you, Jesus. And as we go into the season of fireworks, I want you to realize what's in your life or could be. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. It said the fire come down and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices and the glory of the Lord filled the house. Where the fire is is where the glory is. Where the fire is, that's where you see the smoke. Come on, church. Amen? Amen? If I lit this church on fire, come on, if I took five gallons of gas and I poured it all around in here and I lit that fire and the church went up in flames, you'd see the smoke over there at McDonald's. Yep. Come on, you'd be walking into Walmart and you'd look back and you could see that smoke coming and say, where it's coming from? It's coming from the church because it's on fire. You see the evidence of the fire. Well, this morning as I'm in the house of God, I want you to know that there's evidence of the fire. You say, what's the evidence? The evidence is a holy life. The evidence is a man on fire, a woman on fire. The evidence is things happen when you enter the room. The atmosphere change. It gets a little hotter. Glory be to God. Things get caught on fire because the fire spreads. There's going to be some smoke where the fire's at. Amen. And I'm not just blowing smoke this morning. <laughs> Come on. I'm not just shooting smoke up the stack is what the saying is. Come on. I got something real in my life. It's real in my life. I said it's real in my life. And it's consumed my whole life and my whole being. And I want you to have and experience exactly what I'm experiencing. 
I went to tent revival last night. My friend invited me. It started at 7. I didn't leave till 9 30. He said, Oh my God. <laughs> Two and a half hours. <laughs> what was y'all doing? I tell you what we was doing. The fire of the Lord showed up. The smoke rolled in. The glory rolled in. And things started happening. People started throwing their hands up and praising God. Young people started running around the tent, shouting the victory, screaming, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Young people getting filled with the Holy Ghost in there. I'm talking about it was something great. And you, we come to church and we, oh, don't you preach over 30 minutes, 12 o'clock. Hey, it's time to go. I got the casserole in. We got to get home. We got stuff to do this in. We got to have family time. Amen. 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 Come on, church. But we still want the fire. We want to come. We want to feel 30 minutes of fire. And then we want to go home and just, oh, all right, Lord, that's enough. Cut the grill down. You're burning the weenies. <laughs> Come on. Amen. 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 I heard a little girl last night. She said, if you want something bad enough, you go get it. That's right. Exactly what she said is this. If you wanted a cheeseburger, you'd get in your car and you'd drive to wherever you like getting cheeseburgers and you'd buy you one and you'd have it. And when your mind was made up that you wanted a cheeseburger, you'd go get it, wouldn't you? Well, I come to the house of God today, and I want you to know that my mind's made up, uh, my feet is on the rock, uh, and my name is on the roll, uh, and I want the fire in my life, uh, and I want to see things happen. Amen. Glory be to God. And we can. It says, and the priest could not enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. And when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshiped and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. We won't even come to the altar and get down on, on carpet. These people was outside on the pavement, face down, praising the Lord. Well, I'm not emotional. Tell that to these people who seen the fire. Come on. When you see the fire, when you feel the fire, yeah. amen, you're going to have a little motion in you. You're going to have a little shout in there. Come on, amen, come on. <laughs> amen? Yeah. Nanny said, Nanny said, you tied your tie too long. I said, it'd be all right. I just throw it back and really get to go. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> amen? Come on, church. Come on, where's our fire? Where's our emotion? Where's our conviction? How bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? Do you want it just enough to come in on Sunday and sit in the pew and occupy a little space? Or do you want to come and get something? Amen. You know, last night I went to that tent revival. And there was two ways to go to a, a place like that, a three-hour service. It's two ways to go to something like that. The first way is this. You go and you watch what they're doing and what's happening, right? You go in, you sit there on the chair, and you watch everybody else and what they're doing. <laughs> so you go to church, you watch them play the piano, you watch them shout, you watch them speak in tongues, you watch them run and have a good time, you watch them fall out in the spirit, you watch them preach, <laughs> and complain about how long that it's been, and then you go on home and say, well, I'm not going back to nothing like that because it was too long. Or you could go and apply yourself. See, I didn't go to the tent revival just to sit under the tent and watch what they was doing. I went to join in with the fire. So you say, what did you do, Orville? I got out my chair, and I had my hands in the air, and I was praising God just like I do upstairs, just like I do in my living room, just like I do in the van at work while I'm delivering mail. I was praising God and having a good time, and I looked down at my watch, and I didn't care what time it was because I was in the presence of God, and the train had filled the temple, and the glory had come down, and the fire was stirring. Glory be to God. I ain't worried about what time it is. God's in the house. God's who showed up. God wants to bless you. God wants to do something for you. God wants to heal you. God wants to save you. God wants to deliver you. But we put him on a time 
limit so we can go on back to the house. Glory be to God. Amen. That's not even what I want to preach on. Amen. <laughs> then the king and all the people offered sacrifices before the Lord. Y'all said, oh, Lord, here we go. And King Solomon offered a sacrifice of 20 and 2,000 oxen and 120,000 sheep. So the, the, the king and all the people dedicated the house of God. Look at how many sacrifices they made. Did, did you see it? 2,000 oxen. 20 and 22,000 oxen. 120,000 sheep. So the king and all the people dedicated the house of God. How long, DJ, how long, come on, would it take to sacrifice 22,000 oxen and 120,000 sheep? How long would that take? That wouldn't be just a little 30 minute service right there. They probably want a little three-hour service. This was an all-day event. Come on. Ain't no telling how long it took. But they wanted to do it because they wanted to bless the house of God. And they knew that there was power in the blood. And the, the fire had already fell and they'd already seen the glory. So they weren't worried about going nowhere else. Come on, church. That's right. Amen. Where's our sacrifice? Let's sacrifice a few hours. Let's sacrifice some time in prayer. Let's sacrifice what we have. You say, what do we have? We have our time, and we need to give it to God. Glory be to God. And the priests waited on their offices. The Levites also with instruments of music of the Lord with David the king had made to praise the Lord because his mercy endured forever. When David praised by the ministry and the priests sounded trumpets before them, all Israel stood. Moreover, Solomon hallowed the middle of the court that was before the house of the Lord, for there he offered burnt offerings and the fat of the peace offering, because the brazen altar which Solomon had made was not able to receive the burnt offering and the meat offerings and the fat. Also, at the same time, Solomon kept the feast seven days, and all Israel with him a very great congregation from the entering in of Hamath unto the river of Egypt. And in the eighth day they made a solemn assembly, for they kept the dedication of the altar seven days and the feast seven days. And on the three and twentieth day of the seventh month, he sent the people away into their tents, glad and merry in the heart of the goodness that the Lord had showed unto David and to Solomon and to the Israel for his people. Then, thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king house and all that came into Solomon's heart to make in the house of the Lord. And in his own house, he prosper, prosperously effected. They didn't just come and sacrifice and leave, they stayed there for, two, for seven days. And on the eighth day, they left. Come on, church. What if we come to church and we stayed up in here seven days? Instead of going to your weekly, your, your yearly week vacation down at the beach and getting your suntan on, what if we had a heart to come to God's house and spend seven days with our brothers and sisters seeking after the glory of God, seeking after the fire of God, and we prayed and we prayed and we prayed and we offered up our sacrifices. Come on. We offered up our voice. Uh, we spoke it out loud. We declared it and we decreed it that things was going to happen, that a revival was going to take place, uh, that we come in and we got the fire and we would not let it burn out. Uh, I would not let it burn out. I would not let it burn out. And we come in and seen God move in a way that he's never moved in Bethel Bible Church or in our state, in our union, any of it. Come on, church. Amen. What if we did that? But no, you talking crazy now, preacher. You know, my granddaddy never went to the beach. He didn't care nothing about going to the beach. You know what he wanted to do? He wanted to stand in the pulpit and preach the word of God. That was his vacation. The best thing for him and my granny to do was to preach in a church somewhere and see souls saved. See the fire kindled and see the fire kept. That's what they spent their whole lives doing and still doing it today. Amen? Amen. Come on, church. Come on. And we come in. We drag in. Oh, uh, and you got 15 more minutes. We got to go. You better be quiet. You better hurry up. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Amen? And we never give God his time. And then we get home and we don't give God his time at home either. You don't pray. Come on. I can tell if you've been praying or not. Okay? You know, I ask certain people in here, I ask them upstairs, you know, have you been praying for 15 minutes? I didn't ask them today. Have you been praying for 15 minutes a day? Have you been praising God? Have you been shouting the victory? 
Have you really threw your tie back and just had a good time? Amen? But you know what? I don't have to ask that because it's in the fruit. It's in the fruit. Amen? It's in the fruit. Where is our praise at? He's so good to us. His mercy endured forever. Yes. Unto all generations. Amen? Amen? It's time to shout the victory. It's time to have a good time. Hallelujah. Now, I got a couple more verses I want to read to you. And that was all That was all free. Amen? As, as some folks would say. <laughs> Look at verse 12. And the Lord appeared unto Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to to myself for a house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people. All right, now look at verse 14. We've heard, all heard this verse, and we probably, every preacher in here has probably preached on it, and every preacher you listen to, if you listen to preaching, has probably preached on this verse too. Amen? This is what it says. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will hear their, heal their land. Now my eyes shall be open and my ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. Amen. Now, yesterday, Daddy asked me to preach. Yesterday, so I didn't have, you know, a whole week to prepare or have a bunch of notes. I want you to know that I didn't study any of this sermon. I never even looked at the verse till this morning. And I'm not patting myself on the back. It all come from a thought yesterday. He sent me that. He said, "Do you want to preach?" I said, "Sure." And I started talking to the Lord. I just started talking to Him, Lord. What you want me to do? And I kept talking to him. And I told Jesus, I said, you know, I just want to see you. Lord, I just want to see you. I want to see you. And I want you to embrace me. And I want to embrace you as we look at one another. Now that's very simple. I want to see you. I want to feel you. I want you to see me. And I want you to feel me. Amen? And you know what God said to me? This is what he said. Where are you looking? He said, where are you looking? I said, Lord, I want to see you. Lord, I want to feel you. Lord, I want you to see me and I want you to feel me. And God said to me, where are you looking? Amen. And that's what I want to ask you today. You want the fire? You want salvation? You want faith? You want God to hear you? You want God to see you. You want God to feel you and you feel him and you see him and you be one in together. Me and God, where are you looking for? These people found him at the temple. These people found him where the sacrifice was. These people seen him where the blood was. They shed the blood of those innocent animals, the innocent sacrifices. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. And God showed up. He showed up in fire and he showed up in glory. And he embraced them. And he said, when you, when you talk, when you pray in my place, I'm going to hear you in this house. And today I want you to know that God resides in me. So when I pray, he hears me. Amen? He hears me. But we look in a lot of different places and we're not seeing God. Amen? 
You can't go to the desert and see a monkey. Right? Come on. Amen. You don't get in an airplane and look out the window and think you're going to see a whale. We're looking for God in all the wrong places. You ain't going to find God in a bottle. No. Come on. You ain't going to find God or enlightenment smoking a joint. No. Amen. You ain't going to find God in the TV. You ain't going to find him scrolling through your phone. All these screens that we're looking at. We're looking at everything. We're not looking at God. We come to church and we, we see Jesus, but we don't see Jesus. Does that make sense to y'all? We see him in the word. We see him, what the preacher's talking about. We see him and we feel something a little bit right there. But when we get home, we never look for him again. You got to start looking for Jesus, not only at church. Come on. Hallelujah. But you got to start looking for him in your prayer life. You got to start looking for him in your Bible study. You got to start looking for him in your praise. In your shout. I mean, on him. On them about praying out loud. Amen. You know that there's power of life and death in the tongue. Absolutely. And you eat the fruit thereof. I told them this morning, I told them, I said, you got to speak it, you got to declare it, and you got to decree it. And God shows up. Amen. When you speak things, because you have power through the word of God. And when you speak that power, he looks over his word to perform it. He, he inhabits the praises of his people. He looks over his work and perform it. So yesterday, when I told the Lord that I wanted to see you, and I wanted to feel you, and I want you to see me, and I want you to feel me, he said, where are you looking? And the first thing that came to mind was this. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. And will forgive their sin. And will hear their land. So for God to see me. And feel me. I have to humble myself. Before the cross. Come on. Before the throne. Glory be to God. Glory. I have to humble myself. Come on. I have to pray. I have to pray. First we need to ask the Lord to forgive us. Of our sins. Amen. Then. We seek his face. We ask him to forgive us. And we press in. We press in. We press in. How bad do you want it? Amen. How bad do you want something from God? How bad do you want to see your life change? How bad do you want those babies to come unto God? How bad do you want to see your loved ones and your families saved? How bad do you want it? We talk about we want to pray and we want to see people in our family saved and doing right and living right and this and that. Well, how long did we pray for them yesterday? How long did you get on your knees and pray for your brother, your sister, your son, your daughter, your mama, your daddy? How long did you pray for them? How long? How long did you pray for them? But we want to see all these things happen. We got to get humble. It's not about you. Come on, church. It's about him. Glory be to God. Turn from their wicked ways. Then I'll hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and I will hear their land. Hallelujah. And look at verse 16. This is the last verse I'm going to read to you. For now have I chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever. And mine eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. My eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. Amen. Nanny always told me that I was the apple of her eye. But this morning, I'm on someone else's heart. I'm on someone else's watch. God Almighty. He's watching over me. He's looking for me. He wants to hear from me. Because he's my father. He's a good father. He loves me this morning. He loves you too. Amen. He loves you too. So this morning, what I want you to do <coughs> is I want you to pray. 
I want you to get close to God. I want you to get closer than you've ever been. I want you to speak it out loud. I want you to declare it. I want you to decree it. I want you to press in. Press in. Let the Lord light you on fire and never let it go out. And let the glory follow you everywhere you go. Let there be signs of the fire everywhere you go. Let there be smoke. Let there be burning. Come on. Let there be a fire dwelling in you because you have touched him and he has touched you and you have seen him and he has seen you. And he'll forgive you of your sin. He'll heal our land and he'll watch over us all the days of our life. Do you believe that this morning? Yes. Will you stand with me? Hallelujah. Glory. <coughs> this morning I want to go ahead and practice praying. So everybody in here, I want you to pray. Pray out loud. Amen. When you speak things out loud, there is power in your words. And most of the time, whether good or bad, what you're speaking comes to life. Don't it? That's right. So this morning, I want you to speak it out. The word of God. Declaration over your life, over your family, over your household, over our church, over our pastors, over our Sunday school teachers, over the people that's coming, over souls. Come on, church. I want us to speak it over us in the name of Jesus and see the fire and see things happen. And after we get through playing, that the glory will fall and it will not only just be in here, but we can take it home with us. And everywhere we go, there's going to be smoke just a rolling because we're on fire for God. Amen. This morning, every head bow. Let's pray. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, and we'll spend a few minutes praying. And I really want you to intercede for your household and for your family this morning, for our church. Hallelujah. Lord God, in the name of Jesus. I declare and I decree victory over this house uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, Lord God, I pray for souls. Uh, I pray for souls to get saved. Uh, I pray for people to get healed. Uh, I pray for people to get delivered. Uh, I speak life and I speak liberty over these people. I speak to the atmosphere that it be consumed in the fire of God. Uh, I pray, Lord God, right now in the name of Jesus uh, that your glory would fill the house, uh, that your glory would fill the temple, that your glory would fill these individuals, uh, that you would take these earthen vessels uh, and you would pour out the oil on them uh, like never before, that Lord God, you pour out the oil and you fill it up uh, to overflowing uh, and the abundance and the overflow uh, would touch the ones around us. Uh, I pray, Lord God, that you set us on fire. I pray, Lord God, that you set us on fire. Consume this house. Uh, consume this house uh, in the Holy Ghost uh, and the fire. Uh, and I pray, Lord God, right now in the name of Jesus, uh, that there would be evidence of the fire, that there would be holy lives, Lord, that there would be changes in our household, uh, that there would be changes in our daily walk, uh, that we could be a burning flame, uh, a burning lamp. Uh, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Uh, we could be a burning lamp uh, and a shining light to the ones around us. Uh, everywhere we go, uh, we can be a revival. I speak revival. I speak revival over these people. I speak revival over the household. Lord, I pray for living room revivals. I pray that they would cut the TV off and come into the presence of God. I pray, Lord God, that we put our phones down and we come into the presence of God. I pray, Lord God, for the fire to consume each and every area. Now, Lord God, I pray a blessing over these people. Lord God, every person in here, I pray a spiritual blessing on them. I pray a financial blessing on them. I pray a physical blessing on them. Everything that pertains to their household, I ask that you would prosper it. Prosper it, Lord. Prosper it, Lord. Prosper it even as our soul prospers. Lord, if there be any sin in our lives, in here among us, I pray, Lord God, that you would forgive us of our sins, that you would wash us white as snow, that you hear from heaven this morning, that you hear us in your house. You look down on us and you have mercy. Your word says, for your mercy endureth forever. And I pray for mercy over.
over us uh, right now in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord God, I ask that you would wreck us with your love. I ask, Lord God, that you would flow in on us uh, like a mighty wave of love and power and security in the name of Jesus. Uh, that you would lead us further into what you have for us. Uh, that you would lead us further in a greater anointing, uh, a greater anointing, uh, a greater anointing uh, for Bethel Bible Church uh, and for the ones around us uh, right now in the name of Jesus. Uh, and Lord God, I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you for the blessings. I thank you that your mercy does endure. I thank you, Lord, that it's not only for me, but it's for my children and for my children's children and for my children's children's children. I glorify you and I lift you up right here in this place today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen.